I love being a neurologist and a stroke neurologist in particular because I get to see all kinds of patients who are going through a really tough time in their life and I get to make a change in that to improve it. I'm very good at prescribing blood pressure medicines and antithrombotics to help prevent the next stroke, um, but they need something beyond just a pill or, or insulin or whatever the therapy is um, to really help them with reintegration into their family lives and community. So they need something that's beyond just what a vascular neurologist can do. As a behavioral scientist, as a psychologist, um, I know that the work I do matters, uh, but sometimes getting buy-in from the physicians can be harder. And when I remember meeting with Jenny, I was just thrilled when she said to me, you know, yes, like, I see this happening to my patients and I don't know how to help them with this, but you have the knowledge, you have those kinds of skills. You know, this sounds great and it will be worthwhile. It's, I assume, tempting for some neurologists to say I'm done with my part and now we're going to, you know, see you later. You go off to recovery world, but I, I'm not one of those people. I really want to know what happens. I want to influence it and I can influence it on a bigger level this way by working with Alex. What we're doing with our intervention is a dyadic or couples-based intervention. And different from some of the other approaches that primarily address um, pathology or um, you know, things that are wrong, we're taking a you know, building what's strong approach. Each week of the eight-week program, they get a different module, a different topic that relates to um, adjusting post-stroke. Because we are basing the intervention in positive psychology activities, um, we have couples engaging things like expressing gratitude. So if they are um, expressing gratitude kind of on their own, this could look like maybe writing a thank you note to one of their therapists. If they're doing it as a couple, it would mean something like expressing gratitude to your partner for something that you're grateful for. A lot of what we're doing in these activities is just reminding them what it's like to be a couple, to kind of reconnect at that couple's level. Just laughing together, kind of these little moments of connection um, that are really so important to a relationship. It's invigorating to me to be able to work in this environment where people are asking questions that I didn't even think about asking, and I get to see how they explore those. Being someone who's curious, I am interested in stroke care at all stages. Everything from thrombotic work in mice, to stroke recovery, to stroke imaging, uh, to occupational therapy, and I really like that breadth. I tend to be very interested in improving stroke care across the whole continuum of care. Being here at the University of Utah where we do have um, you know, an academic medical center and then we also have the social sciences which are really known for their family and health research programs. I was so well positioned with my research interest coming into here and to build those connections that I needed in order to um, have the research program that I do. The research that Alex does and that I've been able to participate in I've seen it affect patients and their partners in a positive way, and it's shown me that we can continue to bend the, the curve of stroke recovery, not just by medicines or fancy MRIs or other, other technologies, but also by using what I consider to be pretty simple tools, which is positive psychology, and that that matters. We do have some data that suggests that um, things like depressive symptoms are reduced, um, resilience is increased after they go through this intervention. In the end, what I hope to do with this is to improve people's lives after stroke, to help them live their lives and you know, live it fully. Even though this intervention did have its start in stroke, um, we are expanding it to other populations. For example, um, spinal cord injury, um, we're running a trial right now, um, and also bariatrics. Um, so really, we're kind of running a range. One thing that um, gives a lot of promise for this intervention is that it is scalable you know, it could be delivered to anyone, anywhere. I do research because I really believe in the mission of improving care for the future, and for the future patients. And so I want to be able to manage the patient right in front of me with the best science, but I understand that science came from other people who were doing research. I tell patients that there's hope, you know, where you're at is not a static place, this can get better. And 
and you can enroll in Alex's <laughs> trial. <laughs> but someday this should be standard. We would love for this to be standard. We're not there yet, but that's the kind of thing that we would like to see is that this type of thing is available for Alex's family, my family, and all of our friends and neighbors.